Grace to you all and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, have no fear. And then a little while later he says, have no fear. And then a little farther in our text he says, join me, have no fear. Now, this is not from the Department of Repetitive Redundancy Department. I always wondered why my mother repeated herself, John, clean your room, Johnny, clean your room, Johnny, clean your room, or I'm taking your birthday away. And then when I got to chemistry class, I had a wonderful teacher who explained it to me. She said over and over and over again, water is a polar molecule. And she said it so many times that I remember it to this day. She said, I'm repeating myself so I can wear this as a pathway in your cerebrum. I haven't a clue what water being a polar molecule means, but I still have that ingrained in me. And that's just what Jesus is doing by repeating himself. Have no fear, have no fear, have no fear. Because fear was going to be a grave, pun intended, danger for the disciples. And it continues even after the days of Jesus' disciples that they would face lots of fearful things, especially whenever they were given to make their stand, their good confession of the truth. And so, in the days of Martin Luther, these early Lutherans heeded the words of Jesus Christ in our text, the time that they were summoned to an imperial diet by the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, as we learned from Dr. Ketcher, which means Charles the Fifth. Fifth. And so, not having a lot of time before this particular conference, they hastily gathered themselves together, Luther and all his fellow leading evangelicals, at a place called Torgau. And they gathered together some previously written articles at places like Schwab and Marburg to compose 28 articles of the faith that they would boldly confess to take their stand before the emperor. But rest assured, there was a lot of real fear going on among these Lutherans at this imperial diet to which they were invited. <coughs> that meant some. And so, Luther was probably the most fearful of all, so afraid that he didn't even show up. He didn't dare. Because in addition to the indigestion he had been feeling since the diet of worms. He also suffered a lot of fear because he had been declared at that diet to be an heretic. And yes, I consulted my wife, an English major. That is how you say it. A heretic who was an outlaw ever since that diet had condemned him. But Luther wasn't the only one afraid to go. Remember that valiant warrior prince, Philip of Pessing. He was even reluctant to go, quite suspicious of the emperor's invitation, which really was a summons. And there was a lot about which to have fear. If you're labeled a heretic, you could be burned at the stake. So no doubt these confessors had to rely on words of Christ, like the ones we have in our text today, which not once but twice 
And then the third time say, have no fear. So, likewise, they would have remembered also Jesus' admonition to them from the gospel today that said, you confess me before men and I will confess you before my Father in heaven. That's not exactly how it's rendered in the Greek. Jesus says, you confess in me. And he would confess in them. A holy hint toward the mystical union, if I have ever read one. And so as fearful as they were, they chose to have no fear. And these early Lutherans presented the Augsburg Confession with these words. Inasmuch as our church is descent from the church Catholic in no article of faith, but we only admit some few abuses which are new and have been adopted by the fault of the times, we pray that your imperial majesty will graciously hear both what has been changed and what our reasons for such changes are in order that the people may not be compelled to observe these abuses against their conscience. They were making changes. That's scary. How many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? What? We like the old one just fine. <laughs> and it was scary in the Catholic Church as well to propose such changes. And so, with a very bold and confident joy in their salvation, the princes, and I'm sure in the consultation of Martin Luther, picked Philip Melanchthon to present officially the Augsburg Confession on behalf of all the princes and German city-states. No doubt. Knowing what we know about the personality of Philip Melanchthon, he was probably having his knees knocked together during this presentation in great fear. He would have been scared even in such a small chapel as they gathered in there at Augsburg. How could he take his stand without fear? Because he had to be wondering, how would the emperor react? Would he call me a heretic and threaten my life too? And then again, how would the Pope's emissary, the Cardinal, react? The Pope could do worse than the Emperor. He could excommunicate the Lutherans. And then they wouldn't go to heaven. A lot of reason for fear and uncertainty must have gripped these early Lutherans. And yet, they confessed Jesus Christ openly. Trusting in him when he says, have no fear, have no fear, have no fear. And here they stood, just like Luther had stood at home. So, how about you? Fast forwarding to today, where do you stand? Don't say, I'm sitting, Pastor, can't you tell? <laughs> Do you stand when it comes to your bold and confident confession of the faith? Have you a bold and confident joy in your salvation in order to confess the faith, as Jesus says in our text, from your rooftop? Well, measure the slant first before you try it, but still. Dangerous and fearful as it is, the sentiment from Christ Jesus remains that what's been revealed to you from him is yours to make known to your family, to your friends, to your fellow students, to your video game victims, 
whom you have vanquished to your Facebook followers. You stand, and you stand up boldly to confess the very thing that you did at your confirmation. You stand boldly. And you know why you stand boldly? Because you are, dear friends in Christ, Augsburgers. You are Augsburgers, which are a lot like hamburgers full of good meatiness. Because the Augsburg Confession is your confession. It is your first confession as a Lutheran. It is your primary confession. You stand with these confessors quaking in their boots before emperors and cardinals. You stand as Augsburgers yourselves. And so, I keep saying you stand, and yet you're still sitting. So stand up. Stand up and see if you do not make this same confession that was made at Augsburg. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to ask you some questions from the Augsburg Confessions Statements. Okay. First of all, do you confess that you are born without sin, without the fear of God, who is able to destroy both your body and your soul? If so, confess, here I stand. Here I stand. You confess that Jesus, God's Son, has come into this world to reconcile you and all to your Heavenly Father by being born, by suffering, by being crucified, by dying for your sins and for those of all people. If so, confess, here I stand. Here I stand. Do you believe that Jesus rose and ascended on high in order to reign over you and over his entire church? to make you holy, so that you, by the power of his Spirit, may believe in him as your Redeemer, as he sends that Spirit into your hearts to comfort you with faith's fruits? If so, answer, here I stand. Here I stand. Then, do you boldly confess the hinge upon which all you Augsburgers believe? Justification through faith, which means that you confess that you cannot justify yourself by your own strength or work, but that you are justified solely for Christ's sake. And you believe you have God's favor in Jesus alone through his forgiveness, which you receive from the ministry of the gospel and the sacraments. This is your confession, then confess, here I stand. Here I stand. And if you believe that this faith which you hold dear as Augsburgers doesn't stop with you, but is pressed down to overflowing, that your faithfulness may make you bound to bring forth good fruits by a public confession, doing the will of God as is his command. If this too is your confession, here I stand. Here I stand. This confession that you have made just now is only a small portion of the Augsburg Confession. But these are truths that you hold dear, even in times when your faith wavers. Even in times when doubt grips you. Even at times when the devil accuses you of having a lousy confession, of failing to take your stand time and time again. But you have a God who, despite your failings, despite your lack of wanting to go up onto the rooftop and tell everyone what you believe as an Augsburger, your God makes known these truths to you again and again, that he may renew you through the forgiveness of your sins and the word and sacrament, and that he may make you faithful again 
and again, even proclaiming to you and through you the Lord's death for your sake. When you come up to the Lord's table, you proclaim his death until he comes. And here you stand right now in God's house, confessing in him, and he confessing in you before your heavenly Father. So you do not pause and say, I'm a good standard and I'm a fantastic confessor because you know that's not always the case. But instead, you boast in Jesus Christ alone. For your faith is in your Savior, your confession in Christ. And Christ in you, as he will be in the Lord's Supper once again today. Jesus placed into your mouth, just as right now he is placed into your ear as your Lord and Savior, who has lived for you, who died for you, who rose again for you, for your blood, everlasting in him. In him, you keep standing. Amen. Amen. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding, safeguard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.